Oil and gas typically begins with a muddy mix of fine sediments such as silt and clay combined with the organic remains of aquatic microorganisms called plankton. This organic mud can accumulate across wide areas offshore or on lake bottoms in locations where plankton is abundant. If the organic mud becomes covered by other sediments, it will compact into a type of rock called organic shale. If the organic shale becomes deeply buried over millions of years, it will become exposed to increasing levels of the Earth's heat and the organic matter will begin to convert into oil and gas. Shale that has formed oil and gas is called source rock. The silt and clay grains in shale are tiny and stacked in a tight pattern which makes the rock nearly impermeable. As a result, if a well were drilled into source rock, very little oil and gas would make its way through the rock to the wellbore. For that reason, it was long thought that it would be forever impossible to produce from source rock. However, a portion of the oil and gas in the source rock escapes over time and can accumulate in areas where it's easier to produce. Here's how that happens. Deeply buried rock layers that were deposited in an aquatic environment typically still have water rather than air between the rock pores. Oil and gas is lighter than water. Accordingly, if the oil and gas that escapes the source rock encounters porous and permeable rock, such as some sandstones or limestones, buoyancy will force the oil and gas upward through the pore spaces. If the oil and gas encounters an impermeable layer that blocks its upward migration, it may begin a lateral migration along the layer boundary. If the migrating oil and gas encounters a trap-like structure that it can't escape, then oil and gas will begin to accumulate in the trap in the pore spaces between the rock grains. Traps are often created by faults or folds in rock layers. The structure shown is an upward rock fold called an anticline. This is called a conventional oil and gas trap. A conventional trap can usually be developed with vertical wells because it contains a concentrated accumulation of oil and gas, a much higher concentration than in the source rock. The rock is porous, meaning that it can hold a lot of oil and gas, and the rock is permeable, meaning that oil and gas can flow through the rock into well bores. Isolated traps can be spread over a wide area where source rock is present, but not all structures that look like traps on seismic will contain oil and gas. As a result, conventional oil and gas drilling results in isolated areas of productivity and a lot of risk is involved in finding those areas. Nonetheless, most of the conventional oil and gas areas in the United States have been extensively explored over time and the most attractive trap-like structures have been drilled and largely depleted. Around the year 2000, a combination of strong oil and gas prices and advances in horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing technology began to make it economically feasible to produce from source rock layers or other poor quality rock layers that contain migrated oil and gas, commonly called tight rock. For example, most of the drilling in the Eagle Ford and Marcellus areas is shale source rock, whereas most of the drilling in the DJ Basin and the Bakken is into tight rock. Shale and tight rock layers easily accommodate horizontal drilling because they span wide areas with few interruptions, allowing large working areas without dry hole risk. However, layer thickness and characteristics are not always uniform, causing some areas to be better than others. Horizontal wells are drilled down vertically, or mostly vertical, until they get near the targeted formation and are then curved into a horizontal direction and run long distances laterally to give the wellbores extended exposure to the formation. For example, a vertical well piercing a 100-foot thick shale layer would only have 100 feet of exposure to the oil and gas interval, whereas a horizontal well would have several thousand feet of exposure. Hydraulic fracturing further extends the drainage pattern around horizontal wellbores by creating fracture patterns that facilitate flow.